For years, quantity takeoff has been a manual and time consuming process. But did you know that Revit has built in tools that can automate a big part of it? Well, now I am new to Revit myself, but what I've learned so far has been really eye opening. And in this video, I'll show you what Revit can do when it comes to automating the quantity takeoff. And let's start. So I have a Revit model that looks like that. And as you can see, from this model, we can almost see everything here. Like we can rotate like this by drag and dropping here. You see, I can rotate the building to see from different angles. And if you see this cube here, if I click here back, so I'll just be seeing the building from this side. And if I click on the left here, then I'll be seeing the building or my model from another side. If I click top, then I'll see the plan of what I have here. And if I click here on this house home, so I'll go back to my 3D view. So as you can see, I'm seeing almost everything related to this project and this building here, which makes the quantity take off a very easy process now because I can almost see everything. And of course there are cons, but we will talk on that later. But for the time being, I believe this is an amazing thing that can help us automate the quantity takeoff. And I always had hard time explaining the substructure to everyone. So look at this. Now here I am in the 3D views and I am seeing my model. Here there is one option that is called box section. If I enable this option, so I'm having a box here as you can see. If I click this box, I'll have two arrows here and two arrows here. Small ones, but that is okay. So if I just drag these two arrows down a little bit like this here, for example, or let's go a little bit down. Okay, more down. So as you can see here, I'm just making a plan, a horizontal plan, and I am cutting everything above this plan to see only my foundations. And as you can see, I am seeing almost everything. This is an isolated footing and this is a combined footing and this one as well and I have a raft foundation here. So from the model, we can see everything and we can understand everything about the project and how it is constructed easy. And if you compare this to any takeoff 2D takeoff tool, you will find a very big difference because here everything is clear in front of you. Where is foundation? Where is neck columns and so on? So now let's try and go up a little bit to see what we can have here. So if I just drag this one up, here I am at the ground level. And as you can see, I'm seeing the foundation, I'm seeing the neck column, I'm seeing the ground beam, and also I'm seeing a part of the column. And this is the slab on grade and my core walls for the elevator and everything. So everything here is defined and I know these elements and the rivet actually has intelligence. Like when you select this, the rivet knows that this is a column. And when you set the levels, when you say starting from this base level up to this top level, you can define that it is a neck column, not only a column. This is a beam and this is a foundation, this is a slab and so on. So now if I continue going up, if I go up more here, you see the columns are longer now. I go up more columns longer until I reach the first floor slab level and let's have here. So as you can see, I can see where are the voids and where are my slabs, where are my drop beams and it's amazing. And the most amazing part is that the Revit understands each of these elements. When you select any element, the Revit understands which element are you talking about. When I select this column, it means this is a column type C2 and if you edit the type, you can see the dimensions and everything. And also for the footings, for example, if you select this one, it's footing type F04. And inside here, you can also see the dimensions and the thickness and everything. And quickly, if we are meeting for the first time, I am Ahmed Adel and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. And what is also amazing here is that, see this box section, let's close this box section for now. And all I'm going to do is to just select the whole model. When I select everything, there is a filter option here. So if I filter, if I remove these ticks from everywhere except for structural foundations. So as you can see here, I am just selecting the footings. So the Revit understands that these are footings. I can select a particular or a specific element 
to do whatever I want with it, which is an amazing thing as well. And now I'll enable the box section again here. And let's go to the footings to show you something like this. So as you can see here, when you are doing the manual takeoff, overlapping and stuff like that, you will not be able to see it properly. And I want to show you an example of this. Take a look here. You see how this beam is constructed. It's actually between two foundations. So if you are just measuring from the plan, you will measure this length and you will multiply it by the cross section of the beam to get the volume of the beam. But what about this overlapping part? Even me, even me when I am calculating, such things will be duplicated in my quantities. So I'll, I'll just measure the full beam multiplied by the cross section. And when I go to the foundation, I'll measure the, like the area and multiply by the depth or thickness to get the volume. And that's how this part will be duplicated in the quantity. And you can measure that for so many things. But here, as you can see, we see where is the neck column, where is the ground beam. So you will get more detailed and accurate quantities. And now to the most interesting part, which is how to actually take off the quantities using Revit. So here, still on the same model, let's close the box section. I have this structure here. And all I have to do is from this menu up here, I'll go to view. And from view, I'll choose schedules and under schedules, schedule slash quantities. So I'll click that. It's asking me to save the project, so I'll save, it's fine. And here now I need the quantities for the foundations. So I'll check here, structural foundations. I did a search here and I just click this and click okay. And now for the foundations, what are the things or the fields that I want to show for my foundations? First of all, I need to show something that is called family. And I'll explain what is a family now. And I also need the type. So here is the type. And always, if you have seen any of my previous videos, I always have a template for the takeoff. And this template is like that. I always need an item and sub item, which is in this case, the family and the type. And I also need the count, the numbers, how many numbers. And I also want the length here, dimensions and the width and also the thickness. So foundation thickness here. And I, of course, I need also the volume. So here is the volume. When I click OK, look what I get. I'm getting a schedule that looks like this. And here in column A, I'm having the family. So the family, I have two families here in this project. We have rectangular footing which is the isolated or combined one with a regular shape. And we also have foundation slab or raft foundations which are having a regular shape. So in this case here, as you can see, the type is actually okay for the, let's say rectangular footings. I have F1 and F3, F3, F4, CF1, CF2, and so on. And for the foundation slab, I have 400 mm thick raft. And as you can see what Revit is doing now, it is itemizing every instance. Like every time this foundation or this raft was found, the Revit is putting it as one line here. And of course we have the count and because it is itemizing every instant, so F3 I have one number, again F3 I have one number, and here again F3 I have another one number because it's just separate items for each and every foundation in your project. And for these foundations, we are having the length and the width as we asked the rivet to show and also the thickness or depth of this footing and the volume as well. And by the way, the volume that I am getting here is only for one footing because F3, one number, these are the dimensions. So this is the volume here. I can also get some totals from this schedule actually. So here, if we go to the sorting and the grouping, here I will sort by two things. I want to sort by the family first, then I want to sort by the type. So if we do this, I'll just click OK. Nothing much happened, but go again. And here you see itemize every instance. I don't want this. So I'll remove it. Why? So that I can group my items. Now you can see F1, I have 12 numbers. And instead of having them as line items, no, now it is just one line item that is talking about F1. I have 12 numbers and these are the dimensions. But the thing is that the volume that I am getting here is still for one footing only, not for 12 footings. 
So how can I change this so that I can get some totals here? This also can be done. If you go, for example, here to formatting and I'll select the volume. So I am formatting the volume, how the volume is shown and calculated and all. And here, instead of no calculation, I'll say calculate totals and I'll click OK. So when I do like that, still again, you see F01, 12 numbers. Now here I am getting the total volume of the 12 numbers. And as you can see here, for example, if this is a BOQ, I am taking these quantities for a BOQ, I will have these quantities put under two items. One item is the isolated footings and the other item is the rafts. So from here, it is good to get a breakdown and all of that, fine, but I just need two quantities, one volume, for the isolated footings and one volume for the raft. So how can I do this? I can just export this to Excel and go take a submission or I can do it here inside the Revit. Again from, let's say here, from grouping. What I will say here under the family because now I want the quantity of a family. Again here, we said that these isolated footings are one family and the raft is another family. So for sorting and grouping here under the family, I will select footer and I will select here count and totals and I'll click OK. So what happens in this case, we are seeing that for the rafts, we have total one raft and here is the total volume. Even if I had more than one raft, I will get the total volume here, but I'm getting 37 because it is just one raft. So this is my quantity for the BOQ for the item that is called raft. Now for the isolated footings, we have these much types of the isolated footings, but they are all coming under one family, which is this rectangular footing or M footing rectangular. So here, as you can see, I am getting a total 99.5. So this is the total quantity of this family, which has different types inside. And the types are F1, 2, 3, and so on. But the family is just one family, which is the rectangular footing. So I'm getting here 99.5 for the isolated footing. I'll just take this number, put it in the BOQ as my quantity for the for this item. And for the raft, we can do the same thing. And sometimes you will encounter an issue because for some of the families, like for example, here in Revit, the beam is a beam. So if you are doing a tie beam or a strap beam or a ground beam or a drop beam, you will still use rectangular beam. So your family in that case will be rectangular beam. So if you want to group all your beams by family, then in that case, you will get the volume of all the beams in the project, which is something that you don't want because in your BOQ, the tie beam is different from the ground beam is different from the drop beam. So in that case, grouping the volume by family might not work. So you might need to group by something else. And in that case, it can be the levels in which level the group of beams that you want is falling. And that's how you can group it. And as I said, I am not a perfect or I am not a genius in Revit yet. I'm also still learning. But when you are learning, I'm telling you learn these things because yes, just go to schedule and extract the quantities. That's easy. But how to extract the quantities that you exactly want for a particular item in the BOQ? This is the part that you should practice again and again to see how you can isolate these elements and get their quantities. And that will conclude our discussion today. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.